All right, everyone. Um, just wanted to put up a quick video on uh, an almost forgotten base. You rarely see these out there anymore, but it's a DR Hartfield um, 4. And um, these are made in Japan. Um, I think that, if I recall correctly, these were uh, made by Fuji Gen 4. Four fender, um, and there was kind of a joint effort between two or three different parties. But I think Bartolini may have been involved in the electronics I read somewhere. So this is a uh, so this one's a 1989. It's got this reverse burst thing. But one thing I just really wanted to cover briefly in this is um, is really the electronics um, is the focus of this, just because they are so just incredibly versatile. You wouldn't know it at a glance, but they're so incredibly versatile. Um, in addition to that, uh, just a quick side note on just the build quality of this thing, like a lot of the, especially the vintage Japanese stuff, <coughs> um, it's just amazing. It's got the fret work, it's, it's they're all original, and the neck is dead flat. Uh, the frets are completely level, and it's got a nice uh, thin-ish front to back profile. And I got the action really slammed down low. But it, this thing is a tone monster, man. I mean, these Hartfield pickups, uh, along with this control set, are just amazing. So, um, in many respects, it's the same as uh, many basses initially. So, you got your volume, and then your balance, and then you have uh, a tone control. But if you flip the switch, um, this becomes a filtering control which changes like the frequency that is uh, boosted and cut uh, with the volume so it's just very interesting you get um, a very interesting palette of tones and another thing that I found really cool about this bass is that um, this bridge pickup uh, <laughs> the volume is very matched to the neck pickup and I find even with a lot of basses even if you jack up and raise that height on the bridge pickup and still lower the uh, the neck pickup quite a bit, the volumes are still unmatched. Where in this case, uh, it's this thing's got really good bridge pickup volume. So, so I'll uh, give you a sample of that initially. So I'm gonna go back to the bridge. an idea of the volumes of the two pickup um, right now let me see I think it might be set in tone so let's see. yeah I said all the way all back you can go all the way forward. Sounds like there's a little bit of filtering there too, but so then here's where the magic happens, and uh, a lot of people refer to these as a poor man's wall because of that filter, this filtering feature here. So you flip this switch. It's it very thin, but then listen to this. just the filter knob. feature set I mean and it just sounds great it's super punchy it's um 
It's uh, very almost piano like. Um, I think the jack needs a little bit of a cleaning. Oh, another thing about these is uh, you got the XLR out on this as well. I haven't tested this out to make sure it's fully functional. I'm assuming it is because the rest of the preamp is. But this base was sitting for quite a while when I picked it up. I picked it up with the original um, hard, hard shell case and it needed a, a desperate cleaning and just some fret. Uh, the fretboard was pretty gummed up and just needed cleaning as, as did the body. It's, it's got some, it's got some uh, belt rash in the back, but um, the front still looks decent. It's got just some like uh, just wear from finger, some of these fingers being down here in this area. But aside from that, it's in really good overall cosmetic shape and excellent playing shape. So, so it's um, I think it has a how do you pronounce it? Gato, go to tuners made in Japan, and then you can see the nineteen eighty nine cereal on there so cool base just thought i'd post a couple minutes of this thing it's neat see ya